G'day, I'm Steve. This is Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop and part five of a six part series on building a plate rack. Just to recap how far we've gone and what we've got to do this episode, we'll just go back to the end of the last episode I was posted, which is a wrap up. So we'll just true that up and then measure in the waste, clear that away, and then that'll be fitted as well. Next job after that is to cut the two tenons on these bracing bars that support the plates. And then we've got to cut the mortises for those as well. But the reason I haven't cut the mortises or tenons for this yet is I want to get just the two shelves in and then I can look at it and work out with the plates that I've got whereabouts I want these supports to be. That's where I'm going to leave it. And that's where we might have stopped it last time, but that's where we start at this time. As you can see, I have cut these tenons to size and fitted them. I've also cut the rails and fitted them. And you can see on the sides there, we've got nice through tenons all the way through. At the moment, they're not wedged. That's the last thing I'm going to do. But I'll show you what I did with these side rails. And it's an interesting point. I said in the last episode that I wasn't going to fit these until I had got it together because I wanted to know where they'd go. Well, an interesting thing occurred to me after I'd fitted them, I've got to make some adjustments. That was the template that I made. And you'll notice that I've got fairly big holes here and here for the mortises. And what I wanted to do was put these supports in there with a big tenon. What I found, interestingly, was when I put plates on with just the square edge, the plate is almost straight up and down, as you can see there. Which, when I designed it, I allowed for it to fall back. But what I didn't consider was the fact that this has to have a slope on it. This bottom rail, I've actually put an angle on and you'll see the plate actually leans backwards like that. So it's not going to fall off if someone slams the door. Whereas when it was on a square edge, we had problems. So what I did was worked out the angle I needed to put on this back support rail and that also affected the size of the tenon I could use. If I'd cut the mortises, to the size I originally planned, I would be in all sorts of bother. So this might save you a bit of heartache. I'll pull this apart, show you what I've done, and then I'll show you how I did this angle on the back rail here. Because the way this project's working out, I really want it to be all hand tools. Okay, we used a bandsaw to cut the rough bits here, but we could have used a coping saw. But everything else is done by hand, and I don't want any sandpaper or any glue on this project at all. So I'll pull this apart and then I'll show you how I cut the tenons and how I put this angle on. Then we've got to move on to this bottom support here. I want to put a rail and I mentioned I want to do some carving. So we'll get that done. As you can tell, they're quite nice tight mortars and tenon joints. Now this angle here, how I worked that out was you can either use the drawing that you originally drew up or 
the template that you've used. Then I just got a ruler, worked out where the groove was and lined it up on my template here. And then I marked a V where the groove was and worked out how much of a lean I needed for the plates. Then it's just a question of drawing that line in, like so. Sliding bevel, popping it on where the shelf would be, then adjusting the bevel to follow the contour of that slope. And that's how I came up with that angle. Now in order to cut that angle, decide which part of the rail you want pointing down and just put a mark there. Then pop it in the vise and with your marking gauge, mark that angle in. Once you've drawn the line in, grab a marking gauge and set it so it'll cut right on that line in here and score all the way down the job. Now if you can see where I'm going with that line, you'll notice if I had a fat tenon, like I've set out here, we would actually have a hole in the side of the plate rack because we'd be cutting that chamfer into the tenon itself, but the mortise would be square. It's another reason I don't do this until I know exactly what I'm doing. <coughs> now, how to get that angle cut in. A couple of ways you can do it. If you want, by all means, and if you've got a tilting saw, use a tilting saw. Uh, tilting bed on a bandsaw would do. Um, you could make a, a jig up maybe and run it on the router. But as I said, I want this to be hand tools. I'll show you how I'll do it with hand tools. I'll just clean up a bit. Got that cleaned up. So here's several ways you can put that on. First of all, you could use a hand, to, a hand plane. And just plane it all the way down to that angle. Secondly, you could use a spoke shave. And that'll work quite effectively as well, but it'll take a bit of time. My favourite and a tool that doesn't get used very often in the shed, but I really like using, is a draw knife. Now usually they're used in a shaving horse, but I don't have one at the moment, so I'm going to use it in the vise. There's two ways you can use. Now I find if I use the bevel up, I can remove a lot of stock, but sometimes it catches and can rip a lot of stock out. Whereas if I have bevel down, I've got much more control over the amount that I take off. And it's gonna take a lot more off than a spoke shave will. Well, the larger, heavier one will remove a lot more stock a lot quicker. If you're going to do a lot of this, it can hurt your chest. A really easy bit of kit you can make up for yourself is a breastplate. What happens there, that goes in so it doesn't hurt your chest, and away you go.
Now what I'm going to do is turn it around. And the same as spoke shaves. You can pull or you can push. So seeing the grain's now running away from me, what I'll do is push. I would like to have a little bit more support than I've got here, but it's going to do the job just fine. Now when I've got it nearly onto the line and where it needs to be, I'll change over and use a hand plane and see if I can smooth it right off. It's not a bad workout either. Here I've got just some tear out. Maybe I've got a little bit carried away with the draw knife. So what I'll do, I'll round that over. Now I could use a spoke shave or I could use a hand plane, block plane. I think actually I might use a block plane on this one. And all I'm doing is actually, as I'm planing, I'm just rolling the blocky just a little bit. So it takes that sharp edge off and gives me a nice smooth round over. And then rub your fingers along it and you'll feel if it's sharp or not. I can't stress enough the importance of having sharp planes and chisels. In fact, sharp tools, you'll find your woodwork enjoyment will increase tenfold once your tools are nice and sharp. Be careful when you're doing this too, you don't want to round the tenons over at the end, which I nearly did. Be all right if it was gonna be in a blind mortise, but if you're gonna see it, you really don't want to see it rounded over. And there we have it. Nice arras edges, nice and smooth. Still haven't used any sandpaper. Basically, that's the back rail, the same as this one here. So now, both of them have the angles cut on them, so the plate can fall backwards and not fall off the plate rack. All right, now the main part of this episode is to do a little bit of carving and show you a very simple but very effective carving that you can do with a minimum of carving tools. And that's where I'm going to stop this video. The reason being, I filmed all of that in one day. And I did have a couple of um, excursions into the unknown as far as the carving goes. So I've broken it up into two sections of the carving, which both will give you an idea of how to do it. And one will maybe help you learn a couple of valuable lessons that I did along the way. So until we meet again, this is Steve pulling the shed door down on another video and saying, remember, to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Enjoy your woodwork. If you like what we do, like us on Facebook. If you'd like to know more and get a regular ease new newsletter, which I'm trying to get out this year, please join up the e-workshop at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au. And if you'd like to see this video in its entirety, it's about 48 or 50 minutes, please check out my Vimeo channel, same place, woodworkingmasterclass.com.au. There, you can rent the videos or you can download the videos and shortly they'll be available on DVD. So until we meet again in the shed, take care. Bye for now.